All right, so for problem 3.3-2, it says a bimetallic bar is made by bonding together two homogeneous rectangular bars, each having a width B and length L. The mod moduli, first I'm hearing this word, of elasticity, I think it's modules or Young's modulus, of the bars are E1 and E2 respectively, and an axial force P is applied to the end of the by metallic bar at y equals yp, z equals zero, such that the bar undergoes an axial deformation. Let l equals this, this, then this, uh, b equals this, t, t2, giving you some you know, figures. A, determine the normal stress in each material that is determined, stress one and stress two, determine the value of yp, you know, where force of p is being applied and determine the total elongation e of the bar. Okay, so basically when you, um, Looking at those questions, the first thing you should ask yourself, what is changing? And I think based on the section of 3.3, it's it's all about elongations and elongations are always the same, right? And it's important when you combine two, two things together, they're like, and you're trying to find out something about those two things working together, they, they must share similarities, right? There must be like factors that has to be the same, which then you can set them equals to each other, right? If this is E and this is E and then E equals something, something times this, and then, well, you can set E alone within their own equation and then set those equation equal to each other. And then, you know, you get rid of one unknown, um, you know, set another equations, but I don't know, it's a little late, but you understand what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Anyway, um, so that's that. So what's 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 the same? L is the same, right? The length is the same, and you know uh, E will be the same, right? The change, the elongation will be the same. Well, E over L, or you know however you want to uh, denote this. Well, this means that um, the strain, strain, sorry, the strain uh, for this. This object, this bar, this this entire bimetallic bar has the same strain, right? Okay, so with that said, uh, that's perfect. Now we have to know, we have to sort of, you know, know this by ourselves that you know there's a P1 and there's a P2, right? P1, P2, um, and P1 add P2 gives you P, right? Uh, this sort of you, you sort of just have to know this um, makes common it makes sense right it's, um, you have to pull different forces on these things because their modulus elasticity uh, is is different right or Young's modulus whatever you call it so yeah okay so with these two uh, I understand uh, these two like background information uh, that we discovered or we we be able to finalize uh, now that the question becomes so much easier right so now we can think about well okay well what what is what is um p1 right well p1 equals uh, e times elongation times a now you sort of just know this equation by now if not it's really simple uh, p1 over 1 this gives you stress right and stress uh, equals e over ei wait i'm so sorry that's wrong um, uh, it's the stress over why why okay get rid of this um, it's it's stress over strain gives you E, right? So E times strain gives you this. So does that make sense now? P1 over A1 equals E1 times strain. Well, strain one equals strain equals strain two, right? So I'm just gonna write strain times A1 on this size. Uh, and now you get this equation over here, which this is also applies to two, right? So perfect, now I have two sets of equations. And what is area? Right, area equals T1 times B or T2 times B, right? 
this is the area of, of this part. Perfect. Okay. So now we we set them all together. So E times um, B. Right. And now we, we set an equation with just P. Well, in this case, uh, it's E1 times T1 plus E2 times T2. Right. We basically added these together. So it's E1. Um, My bad. Wait. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, P1 plus P2, right? Which is, we derived over here. So we added D1. Uh, we added these these six figures together and it simplifies to this, right? Because strain times B, you know, well, we, we used this mostly, right? As area equals T1 times B. Okay. So, yeah, I don't think this is too hard. You understand how, how we get here, right? Like P1, P2, you know, these two. A, we just exchanged A into T1 times T times B. Okay, great. Um, well, we only have one unknown in here, which is uh, strain, right? Because E is given, T1 is given, T2 is given, B is given, P is given. Um, so in, we can calculate what strain is, which is 0 0.1 excuse me, 1959 times 10 to the power of negative 3, right? Pretty straightforward, you, you know, no unit, but I'll usually just write strain at the end. Um, so now we have the strain. Uh, it's pretty easy to calculate, uh, you know, uh, what this strain is. Wait, sorry, why did I write it like this? Yeah, strain times E1 and then stress equals strain times E2, right? So these will help us find the normal stress, which is for part A, right? This is for part A, and I think stress, normal stress one is 13.71 megapascal, and stress two is about 41.14 megapascal, right? Um, okay, so this is A. Now B, B is sort of just like a statics all over again, because, so if this is T1 and this is T2, that means, well, they're all applying from the middle, right, the P. So P, it's creating, uh, let's say, a moment at this point, right, at the X axis, right? Well, this there's difference, I mean, P1 is applying at a moment this far away, and then P2, is apply a moment uh, this this far away. Therefore, P1 must be applying a moment somewhere uh, that's equal to the sum of P1's moment and create P2 create a moment, right? S simple equilibrium uh, relationships that you should have known from this from statics. Uh, great. So P1, and we already know what P1 is. I'm just writing this uh, to for simplicity, right? Because P1, you can just get it from here. Anyway, um, so yeah, P1 times, what is T1? T1 is 25 milliliter, but it's half of it. So it's 25 mm divided by two plus um, the rest of it right down here, which is 15 milliliters and um, plus P2, um, which is half of from the bottom, which is 15 over 2 milliliters over 2. And this whole thing equals P times YP, right? We know what P is, P2, P1. We can, we can find it uh, over here, right? We have the stress, normal stress. We have the area. Now we can just find P1 and P2. Everything else is given, everything else is constant. Um, in the end, P, y, P, y of P, uh, sh you should get about 14.6 milliliters. Okay. I mean, sorry, millimeters. Um, and then C. 
So what is C to determine the total elongation? That's pretty straightforward. You have E, uh, you know, strain was calculated over here. Uh, e times the total length of this will give you the total elongation, right? So, so one one step process calculation process. This should gives you about uh, 0 0.294 millimeter. Okay, so A, B, C. This is a uh, oh, it's the second question in this question, but you know this section uh, takes a lot a lot of time to to solve a question. Yeah, there there usually require longer methods. Um, so yeah, anyway, as long as you have a clear mind of what you're doing, you know, you know, you find the relationship in the beginning, especially, you know, realizing that L and E are constant, they're, you know, they're, they're, the change will always be constant between the two different materials, which means strain is constant, and also uh, P1 plus P2 gives you P, and then the location of P1, P2 are always in the middle, um, you know, that's... That's basically really much it. Everything else is just calculations. So yeah, uh, hopefully this was helpful. Good luck on your studies, and I'll see you in my future videos. Bye.